Shock Troops uh, as well coming onto the front. Panzer Grenadier is going to have a tough time. Nice bundle grenade, though. Although he does hurt himself. Actually, it'll be hilarious if I look on there and it says uh, two friendlies killed and it's his, his, his own models. Hello everyone, this is Grayshot17 here bringing you another COH2 replay. This is a 2v2 on Statshot. This is uh, brought to you by an RNG god, an amazing Patreon supporter. And again, if you would like to support me on Patreon, uh, the link is down below, but thank you so very much to the people who do. And again, I give a shout out to everyone at the very end of the video. As well, if you want to submit a replay, you can absolutely do so. Send to grayshotproductions at gmail.com and I will take a look as well. Because of the success of my recent videos on um, the Masters Tournament, I actually kind of want to do more casting on Twitch. Um, so, again, have to thank AE for that. But the main thing that I want to do is also cast games that maybe are not top-tier players, but just normal players. And uh, kind of criticize, kind of go into detail on that, what they do right, what they do wrong. So I may start doing that on Saturdays, or Saturday uh, later morning, early afternoon. Because... Uh, Thanks, AE, for giving me the idea and Tightrope and everyone else who did the Masters Tournament because I really like doing replays on Twitch. It was actually a good... I got a good reaction off people in chat. So I'll do a couple test runs for a few weekends. Um, but unfortunately, I won't be able to participate in the tournament because I go on vacation when it comes back up. But there's tons of amazing casters doing replays. So on the 9th and 10th of November, I highly, highly recommend you go check out all the tournament stuff going on. Meanwhile, seeing an engineer squad be annihilated by an MG over here. We have Vermont OKW versus an American and a Soviet. We already have Airborne versus Pathfinder. Oh boy, this is going to be good. This is going to be good. Pathfinders and Airborne versus uh, Panzerful Slayers. Unfortunately, Boink didn't go any special infantry, but he did bring out a heavy tank destroyer. So we could see an elephant and a tiger as well. Joey uh, could go, let's see, B4, ISU 152, or just 152. Uh, piece of artillery could be very interesting to say the least. Let's double check their, everyone's rank real quick before we dive too much into this. And yeah, looks like the allies have slightly more playtime. But should be interesting to see how things go. Because again, rank doesn't matter. It just shows overall playtime. And I, I, I've seen, again, doing the Masters, I've seen even the pros make some really dumb decisions. Uh, very rare, but it does happen. For example, maybe should have treated a little bit sooner than having... Yeah, Rifleman, open fire. Uh, unit preservation, Dimitri. Unit preservation is key in this game. Any case, uh, I also saw some of the best plays I've ever seen. Uh, I have something going up with uh, Tightrope that I, ha I, I, I don't know how I would do it, but I need to make it. I, like, I have an idea in my head of how I would do it, but I need to make something with how Tightrope did. Anyway, it was really good. Really, really damn good. But... And again, Tower still going on. Highly recommend check that out. In this game, however, we have, again, al access to actually pretty well. They have a decent amount of resources compared to the Allies. And still holding. Panzerfoe Slayer is coming up with a Kubel, the most powerful unit in the game. Uh, Pathfinders are on the field with Riachalon. But, uh, yeah, I don't think you should have pushed up. Honestly, they're very weak. You should really just stay in the uh, defense infantry. I know these guys are pretty good long range, or at least Pathfinders are Riachalon. Eh. They're good. They're fine. They're good, like, support and just being there and taking the brunt. Being heavy cover might have been a little better for uh, survival reasons. Uh, Kubel, though, still give, still giving them hell and up to vet one, so good job there. Needs to pull back, though. Boink doing pretty well. Has uh, double MG, or at least it did have double MG up uh, before having to retreat. Penal's trying to flank around this MG almost outside of its cone of fire, but unfortunately just... Barely inside being suppressed. So, yeah. Unfortunately, Joey's going to have to retreat those pieces of infantry. He does have engineers coming up. We do have a scout car that is being deployed to the front. So, most likely what he's going to try to do is swing around and hopefully knock out the MG that's causing him a lot of grief. Uh, he, does, he does have some engineers, more engineers than I expected, pushing into mid. Again, just trying to cap some territory. Unfortunately, these pioneers are going to push back his engineers. Again, better close range. While the MG and the Grandiers kind of just guard this area on right. Which is pretty bad because that's the allied fuel area. And uh, yeah, that's going to put a lot more fuel in the Axis hands. Which again, not great for the allies. Anyway, speaking of which, they are taking mid. And with them taking left, at least they're not losing VP points anymore. Scout cars pushing in. But this is actually a bad area to push into. 
Um, not because, again, the OKW is... Uh, their forces can't be taken out by a scout car. They can, absolutely can be. Oh, by the way, apologies. I'm doing this and feeling a little under the weather. But, uh, so in case my voice cracks or anything like that, or I just sniffle or something, that's why. But the reason I say it's a little more difficult is these pounds of layers. They are getting upgrades with the medical. Do you have a medical? You do not. All right, Boink doesn't have a medical. But uh, the reason I say this is the AT grenade from these things are just annoying. They are incredibly annoying and actually far-reaching, so you really have to watch out for that. He doesn't have a ton of munitions at the moment, but he's getting a good amount of supply, even though it has uh, decreased slightly with the allies pushing into mid. So one of those far-reaching AT grenades could pin that AT, uh, sorry, that, that, that scout car, and just keep it contained. Uh, meanwhile, Grandiers are pushing in the south. I, I'm assuming just trying to hold down all the territory they took. MG's been placed, though, again, they could flank all the way around here. And that's the nice thing about this map. There's lots of different areas to flank if you go around all the way around, the, like, the far edges of the map. Panzer Grandiers are coming in for additional infantry support. Koop will try to rush in, but the scout car's like, I'm sorry, what was that? And pushed him back pretty quickly. Serum Pioneers, although, lying in wait. Although, instantly retreating. That's a bit weird. Panzer Slayers advancing, though. It looks like the entire left side by the Axis completely fell apart um 50 cal machine gun riflemen are all coming onto the field we have a captain as well so we could see some at eh, maybe a steward maybe we could see oh I'm, I'm sorry i'm thinking the wrong thing god damn it captain is not steward's a half track that would be the lieutenant who gets the steward any case scout car going in on the flank again my assumption would be around the mg which is exactly why you want to use that Puns full slayers are moving into mid, and there's not much stopping them, so at least we'll be able to grab that territory. We have Grandier is trying to rush down that eight uh, scout car and use its uh, Panzer Faust, but unfortunately that will not happen. That will simply not happen. Yep, MG's being taken out, and uh, Satchel inbound. Satchel is inbound. Good, good flank, Joey. Good flank. Up, oh, he stopped the Satchel because realized he would have retreated, and now he's hanging straight back to base. Might be able to kill another model, but with the Grandiers right there, it's best to just pull out and wait for additional infantry to come up so you can fight them um, on the front lines. Though, it's not like you can't do hit-and-run tactics, but like I said, Panzerfaust will definitely cripple that thing. I love how it fires through the debris, too. That, that, that's great. Panzerfaust Slayers uh, counterattacking in mid, at least getting that all that territory while the Americans kind of fortify the left-hand side with the fighting position. Again, not a bad idea. It's easily flanked if, if a person's good at micro and at least paying attention. But it is something there to cause more havoc for the enemy. Once again, a flank this way could easily go around a lot of these allied lines. But a lot of people just click on the point and will go straight there. But again, oh god, captain equipped with a bar, rifleman, and even some that are weaker uh, are, are pushing in. MG34 opening fire, but these guys are in cover. They should be totally fine. Uh, it takes a lot to suppress them in heavy cover. And again, you could very easily just move around and flank, which is exactly what he's doing. Meanwhile, Grenadiers are pushing. Oh, good grenade. Killing at least two engineers, pushing the penals out of cover, which should allow them to do more damage. We have a satchel going out, but it's not going to really hurt any of the grand Panzer Grenadiers. Pioneers moving on in, most likely trying to cap that territory. Kubel trying to also cap. Again, a lot of infantry being pushed back by the Panzer Grenadiers. Again, in cover, very nicely done. Moving cover to cover, slowly pushing back. But the penals are just hanging back to base and. He did get some new ones, but again, he has three squads now, and they are kind of moving back up. But luckily, Joey's microing his forces pretty well, keeping an eye on them, and will slowly push them back. Again, unfortunately, Panzer Grenadiers are so far up that it doesn't take long for the penals to just heal and come back. So, they're going to need something else to kind of hold this front, and I don't think a simple Kubel is going to do that. Uh, we do have a half-track in mid, though, and that should cause a decent amount of suppression. He is behind the tree. It's a weird spot because it's not allowing him to suppress. Which, again, makes sense. Um, unfortunately, blocking cover. Unfortunately, he gets out of it. Immediately, Malam's like, excuse me, good sir. I have an AT gun. So, yeah, Malam and Joey doing pretty well. Dimitri and Boink are still doing pretty well themselves. Uh, unfortunately, resource-wise, the allies are slowly gaining an upper hand there. Uh, no cash is yet. Just amount of field, uh, the amount of presence on the field. And, actually, Joey's about to take over the right-hand side. With uh, Malam holding steady on left, again, still holding all that territory and putting some of these beacons out for detection of infantry in case they try to sneak around, he could at least see them or reinforce his men if they're like paratroopers nearby. Unfortunately, G43 rifles putting a lot of pressure on the infantry and equip that with the MG34. And I think that, yeah, you're going to need some infantry support. Luckily, you have an ambulance right there to heal. 
and your riflemen are kind of pouring on in. Uh, Pens will still have trouble, especially being in no cover. They're going to need to get to that heavy cover and just fire long range. Now, I do believe that they should win that fight long range against riflemen with their upgrades. But, there are a lot of infantry, and he's also bringing up an AT on the support. So, even with the Kubo providing some support fire with the MG34, I think the artillery fire from Joey's going to seal the deal and push them back. There it goes. Oh, he's actually targeting the MG34, not that defense. Okay, I thought he was going to target that... Uh, defensive location that the, that the Peds Full Sleeves had, but no. Now the Peds Full Sleeves are kind of running all over the place. It's kind of weird. Are they throwing grenades? What are you doing? Because you're just out of cover right now. I mean, sure, you're taking it, but you're not doing all that much for it. You're just kind of making your men... You're just losing manpower right now. You're not doing anything to them. You're not pushing out of cover. You took it. It would probably You could probably could have took it if you move behind this heavy cover here. Engineers falling on back. I don't know why. Oh, maybe Panzergrader is pushing it back, and looks like they pushed back this... Uh, penal troop penal troops are also falling back and it looks like there's no other forces on this right hand side So they're gonna be able to take all that back which is important because they need a fuel of some type in order to keep this match competitive Smoke's going down I'm assuming just uh, keep them back while they go back and heal because yeah They're just walking back to heal from the ambulance. They're like man. We lost a few models here I'm just gonna head back and uh, get them back up Shouldn't take more than a second. Half track once again being hit by the AT gun. I think middle, unfortunately, is a place where he can't keep fighting. It, it, it's just, wow, yeah, that that AT's artillery, nice, gets a good hit there. Uh, paratroopers coming on in. A Joey went with the B4. Always positive, always positive with that commander. Again, as long as you believe, good things will happen. Shock troops uh, as well coming onto the front. Pedro Grandier is gonna have a tough time. Nice bundle grenade though. Although he does hurt himself, actually, it'll be hilarious if I look on there and it says uh, two friendlies killed and it's his own his, his own models. That's kind of funny. Penal troops actually in heavy cover, although it's weird, I don't know why they're not in heavy cover. But anyway, they should be able to out-DPS a lot of the Panzergrandiers because now they only have Panzer Shreks, which is not going to do really anything, plus they're out of cover. Panzer Headquarters was made, no upgrade though. So, Boink is going to be eh, a little far behind. I mean, I don't know what he's going to be doing. He doesn't exactly have enough for armor anytime soon. Uh, so, I'm sorry, Dimitri. Not, Boink, same thing. Like, again, he could get himself like an Oswin, but he's not going to be getting any armor anytime soon. So, it's going to be a few minutes for Boink and same thing for Dimitri. Oh, Dimitri might be a little farther off. Grandier's opening fire, but unfortunately, they're just... It not They're not in cover. It's like, guys, move to cover to cover if you're going to be in these engagements. That's where you need to be. Anyway, uh, I mean, allies are prepping themselves in mid, just locking the area down. Once again, this left area is locked down, so that's why they're locking down mid now. They get the VP points to just close this game fairly quickly. Pons is coming up, but they're by themselves, and there's so much infantry in mid, especially the paratroopers with LMGs. These Pantsful slaves aren't going to be able to hold. They're, they're, they're simply not. There's too much firepower being thrown their way. And unfortunately, this piecemeal effort isn't going to really dislodge them. Plus, they just walk back to the ambulance back here, and they're totally fine. Also, we have caches going down by Malam trying to help out. Uh, shock troops coming in, just annihilating the Sturms. Half track, again, good idea. Move it over to a place where there isn't as much AT. Oh my god, that dude... Dimitri, you can't fight that way. Your your tree path is going straight through the allied, like, lockdown that is mid. You're just going to be torn apart. Anyway, half-track falling on back. We still have the MG42 opening fire, trying to suppress those infantry units. Uh, Population-wise, the allies do have a small lead, not a huge lead. Uh, Recon's going up by Joey. He's using that abundance of munitions to his uh, advantage. Again, trying to get Recon to identify where is the best target. Allies still have both fuel and are putting pressure in mid for our trying, I'm assuming, to grab the other munitions. Allies controlling this point. So, yeah, they're slowly putting the close with the axes now having, like, probably between a quarter, like, probably, like, 27% of the map is under axis control right now, which is not good at all. Shock troops, though, get a, a hit by a nice bundle grenade and push back. Not kill, but at least push back. Um... Although additional forces are coming on in, which should at least contend this sector. Um, we do have riflemen coming on in, which should be very annoying uh, on the flank, at least stopping the Axis advance in this sector. So let's see, we have a Jackson being made. We have 
Uh, armor, nope, he hasn't yet to get the, the heaviest of armor that the uh, Soviets can deploy. Panzer IV is being made. I mean, right now it's best shot, though Jackson would... And the amount of AT the Allies have could counter it very easily, though Panzer Grenadiers as well could be used by the Axis to counter that. We have a lot of AT by Dimitri with two for Cadmorphers. We just haven't really seen much Allied armor to use it against. Nice shot with the long-range AT gun right there. He didn't even actually use the extended like shot where he can increase its sight. He just was like, oh, okay. No, he's still in my range. He hasn't moved that. It's still in mid. All right, cool. We do, however, have a flank. We can see down here, Stern Pioneers going all the way around again. If you're losing the fight, try to find another area. And pulling the Americans away from mid might be your best strategy, as you do have a hard point here. So at least with the Panzer Headquarters, if they try to push, they'll be stopped immediately. And again, that might be your best your your best chance. Stern Pioneers flanking the NG, at least the be able to push that back and maybe take on the point play some mines dimitri has a ton of munitions right now almost a dot being made hopefully with the scg uh upgrade which will make them uh competitive against a lot of these forces like the the pathfinders and the uh paratroopers although again we'll need to get close to do so in order to really because again those lmgs are really good long range if they're especially if they're in place in every cover Panzer IV just trying to run over penals, which is a very risky strategy because, again, penals are known for... Especially if they just get the upgrade for PTRS rifles. Hot damn, they just throw Satchel on you, you're a goner. But it didn't happen. Again, uh, Joey's using them more for frontline troops. He is building, though, the better building. So he's, he could possibly get, like, a KV-1, SU-85, whatever, whatever it may be. Oh, nice attack with the Panzer Grenadiers. Might be able to kill it. Grenade does kills a model. Uh, nope. Able to retreat. AT gun hits the Panzer IV pretty well and pushes it back. Still in range. You're still in range, Panzer IV. Get out of there. Double for Ken Murphy in mid, but there's no armor. Allies doing this all without any armor support. Finally, though, uh, Dimitri's like, maybe we should fight on that front that we haven't really engaged in. So, that's good. That's good to see. Um, unfortunately, the Panzer IV Slayers, because their medical base is back at HQ, that's the one gripe. Yes! They can heal back at base, but you also now have to go all the way back to base to get the heals unless the Vermach player, which so far is not done. Boink has not put up like, oh, Satchel throw, pushing it back. Nice. Bo Boink has not put down like a medical post to heal his men on the front line to keep Dimitri on the fight. And again, Dimitri should ask for that so that way he can keep the fight going against the American player who has that so close. Now, again, we can also see a Stuka bomb or something take this out, but we have no artillery on the Axis side. No, no support guns, no Stukas, nothing. And I think that would also be effective is if he got a support gun. We know he went medical. A support gun putting pressure on the allied lines, even in heavy cover, would help destroy the cover and push him back. Nice rifle grenade, by the way. Pan's Grenadier is advancing a nice flank on the AT gun. Might be able to neutralize it. We have uh, penals coming around here. Again, flanking the MG once again. It's like, don't worry. Oh, AT gun decrewed. Focus on the penals. They're coming on the flank. Also, maybe some heavy cover. Allied lines being pushed back slightly. Again, Obosodan. Again, he's going for the Obosodan SCG upgrade to really push him back. But the MG should hold these guys back pretty effectively. Penals get pushed back by the Grandiers, which are getting a lot of kills, respectively. This might be a good counter for Boink. Boink is definitely doing a lot of damage against Joey. And he, Joey's lost a number of men. He's lost his AT guns. He lost his penals. He lost an engineer squad. And also, the combined effort of the Grand is actually putting a lot of pressure on the Shock Troops. So, nice grenade pushes them back. And again, on the move, the MG-42 can't fire. They need to be uh, stationary in order to be effective, as you can see right here. Now, Panzer IV coming up, though, is going to change it. It's going to push it back. Right now, what Boink needs to do is knock out that AT gun. If the Soviets get it back, that could be a huge negative. They need to knock it out. So, good counterattack by the Axis. Now, SCG-44 in cover as well, putting pressure on the MG and forcing it back. Again, this infantry is incredibly powerful with those upgrades, so anytime you can get them in cover and just entrench, they can hold a position or do a lot of damage against enemy forces in a position. Panzer IV pushing back the penals once again. Uh, Joey is getting a KV-1. Malam does have that Jackson, which could come over, but he's busy with this. Panzer Grenadiers in, uh, equipped with... Um, Panzer Shreks and uh, non-equipped are just rushing his front line. He does have riflemen on standby, and I'm actually unsure why he isn't moving them up. Jackson, unfortunately, trying to run for its life against the Panzer Grandiers, shooting it. Again, we're seeing a possible allied collapse right here. Hang the AT gun as well. With it destroyed, he could possibly move up his Panzer IV to assist. 
Um, I gained some additional fuel, a little bit from the cash. Again, not too much, but again, at least Axis forces are slowly climbing back up in terms of overall resources. They still need the fuel in order to get things back up to where it needs to be. But overall, they've definitely taken a lot more territory. So in a lot of games where it's like, oh, gray shot, like it's over, it's done, quit. No, it's not. It's absolutely not. Uh, even if in a down position, one good strike or a good maneuver could really help. And as we saw, um, Joey lost a number of men on his right flank and unfortunately fell apart. Malam still has a lot of really good infantry. Let's not deny let's not counter that. But unfortunately, this giant Obel Sadatan group of very powerful infantry. Oh, good grenade. Yes, gets three models killed on that. Is more than enough to push back a lot of this, these allied lines. Again, he saw the increase in the p threat that the allies were coming. Oh, we also have a support gun. There we go. There we go. Panzer Force Slayers as well, combined with the Obel Sodaten. Yeah, it's it's a hell of a threat. Even when bars it, it can't necessarily fight that. Um, especially if they start throwing grenades to push them out of cover. And uh, right now, I think the Obel Sodaten and Panzer Force Slayer squad might not have it. Yeah, good grenade. Because again, the Americans are in cover. The Axis are not. I also love, I'm sorry, just to point out, this glitch has been around for years, but I just love this. I love the Obel Sadatin just standing there, just hovering with their guns. They essentially go into a, a, a lot of designers will have like a, a place where they have the arms stretched out. So that way, um, they can highlight the, uh, they can kind of go in and animate and stuff like that. So it's a default mode, I should say, uh, for animation. Panzerfaust going out, crippling the KV-1, Panzer IV, trying to get some shots on it, along with push back the penals for Kenworth, is finally opening fire, hitting it front armor, doing still a little bit of damage. Jackson coming in, unfortunately, the Kenworthers are right there. Uh, Allied infantry pushing back the Kenworthers. Panzer IV, they're trying to go for the kill. He is trying to hit the front of it, so he could see some bouncing, we do. KV-1 also just get, missing the shots for Kenworthers, trying to hit it, but unfortunately push back. Panzer IV just can't pen, Jackson can. Panzer IV going in deep. Now, this is a position where it's like, you probably don't want to do that. And again, because it's like, all right, you're doing very well, but you don't... Well, again, it's a risk that, unfortunately, was not worth it. He couldn't pen the KV-1. KV-1 is really good front line... Uh, front, sorry, front armor against medium armor, respectively. Mixing it hard to pen with three shots bouncing. Yeah, that was, unfortunately, not worth the risk. Because even though they... Even though you would kill it, the KV-1 itself is not... Like, again, you've already done so much damage to him that I don't think it would be that big of a deal. Um, staying around, helping guard against the infantry and trying to kill the Jackson, I think, is a bigger threat. Because that's something that can kill you. The KV-1 is something that will have a nuisance. It is a big armor target, but you have the AT and enough support, like, with the Panzer Gradiers and everything else, to take it out already. So, yeah. I know it's the idea of, like, it's so close, just rush in. It's like, well, the Jackson's killing you right now. Because he didn't help out against the infantry coming in and killing the Brakadenwerfers, which had to retreat, which allowed the Jackson to push on in. So, yeah. Maybe just kind of focusing on priorities and then eventually going after it while there's nothing stopping uh, coming in to kill you. That would have been a better idea. Anyway, penal shock troops, pounceful slayers, and paratroopers are enough to pull back the OKW's uh, really powerful uh, AT units. Now, the KV-1 was healed by the engineers, but the Panzergrandiers are trying again to kill it, which once again is a dumb move. Panzer Shreks cannot kill this thing. It has too much armor. Maybe a second set? Fine. And you are getting the upgrade? Great. But this thing is literally just holding its time, biding its time, just taking hit after hit. Now, again, Panzer Shreks opening fire. Some of it bounced, some of it did damage. Another set coming over. Now, I will say Milan would come over here and just, like, literally just bounce, bounce. Okay, bounce and hit. Him coming over here could just mow down these guys. And remember, they're rushing back. Luckily, there's no other allied force. But he is shredding Pan Panzer Grenadiers quite easily. That could have been very bad for him. Again, I, I, I like the intention of trying to get the kill. But the KV-1 is so armored. It's kind of, it's the Churchill in that regard. Where it's like, you have to be very careful about engagements. Because it takes so long to kill them. You have to make sure there's something to back up. And you could risk killing your infantry while just trying to go in for that final kill. Shock Troops coming in again, trying to stop the Axis from pushing it any further. American Infantry coming in again, fully, uh, like, almost all Vet 3. All equipped with bars, incredibly powerful. Yeah, the, the uh, the Grandiers with their, um, 
MG42 is going to need to be entrenched to have a chance against these guys. Unfortunately, that was not the case. We have a fighting position going down for an MG to kind of guard this sector. Allied forces as well, capturing the left paratroopers and the pathfinders. I like how it's like, here's the base American units in their own sect, and here are the, like, special units in their own sect. Now, Boink, unfortunately, doesn't have a ton of, um... It still doesn't have a ton of fuel to get armor. Um, now, he has to wait another... Again, this is why I say now, because I'm assuming he's saving up for an elephant. He has to wait another probably three, four minutes before he gets a chance with his current fuel outcome. That's like being generous, saying that he would capture additional fuel. Um, so, yeah, he's unfortunately not going to get armor. Unless it's, a, unless it's a panther, but once again, I would assume he would have gone the panther earlier. Dimitri, uh, again, doing very well. Needs armor as well. Has a ton for the tiger. Uh, but not a lot of manpower, which I'm assuming he'll be getting shortly. Again, unfortunately, all the infantry units he's getting are costly. So when, unfortunately, he does push really far with them, or they do end up dying, again, it costs a lot to get them back up, which could delay armor. Which is why sometimes it's just best to hold and play defensive than trying to go out and push. But he is pushing for resources, which there's no real contention. There are some shock troops, but if played well, the Pensfos leaders could hold him back. Again, they do very well at shredding. Allied forces, though, are doubling down. They have a mortar carriage, helping to counteract a lot of the, um, well, I, I'm assuming not a lot, but the, ho helping to counteract a lot of the, uh, the Axis infantry in mid, the MGs, the Oval Sadaten. Wow, he even stole the AT. Nice job, uh, Boink. Although, good strike here. They're, they're in negative cover right now. These guys are entrenched and just shredding the forces, though. Good bundle grenade does kill the men. Good, really good shot there. AT gun firing along the flank. Again, uh... Grandier's trying to push him back, but they are entrenched. Again, you do have to watch out for um, grenades, stuff like that, and move them very quickly. But they they did a good job at holding their position, even if they did lose a squad. KV-1 coming on the flank. AT gun's like, nah, I can't fight that by myself. Joey doubling down on Katusha's. I'm, I'm curious to see. We only have one kill here, but I'm curious to see how that goes. Shock Troop's taking a lot of casualties. Pensful Slayers, uh, even though one squad had to fall back with the Evil Sedan, this squad is able to hold this position. But once again, that's a lot of manpower that will take to re, uh, reinforce a lot of those troops. So, again, so it's just, it's just one of those things where, how, and how, how, do I, how do I put this nicely? He wants to go for the heavy tank, but unfortunately, yeah, him reinforcing his Abel Sodan is going to cost them. And it's going to make it longer long for him to get that tiger. And right now, they do need armor to help fight this infantry. They absolutely do. Uh, right now, again, the Allies do have more of a population than the Allies do. I'm sorry, the Axis do. Free man that AT got immediately knocked out. Oh, man. Oh, man. It was like, hey, we got the AT gun. Rush it all the way back to base. And it's like, it's almost healed for reinforcements. Like, nah, it got taken out by the captain. Katusha most likely hitting the sector. Are you going to reman it? Because that would have been a bad move. Gradier's just trying to push through the artillery fire. MG, not so lucky, does get hit with a nice barrage. Luckily, do oh, nope, does get killed by the barrage. Mortar carriage getting an excellent shot right there. Pa pa uh, Pensful Slayer is pushing on back. We have an elephant moving on up. Tiger still far away, unable to get it. Damn, how long has he been trying to go for this thing? He's had the ability to get it probably for the last three or four minutes, but unable to. And the again... Um, the recent Tiger upgrade has made it super effective against infantry. So, the, I like how he just keeps reinforcing to get infantry. But, um, it, it, a Tiger would do so much more against, like, the, the shock troops and this. Because I've seen, literally, this Tiger now is amazing versus infantry. Um, and you could say, yeah, great shot, what about the Jackson and stuff like that? It could easily, you know, it could push back the Tiger. But, that's the only AT he has. And Joey, uh, does it, I mean, he has a KV-1. I, 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 actually, a main battle tank would be incredibly effective right now. More so than frontline infantry. Though they have done quite well in kill infantry, and a bundle grenade right here would do a lot. So let's let, let me not let me not discount that. Uh, also, Verkadwerfer is going deep uh, with a strike on the mortar carriage. Might be able to get the kill, but nope. Like Rifleman putting enough pressure that he wants to make sure they live. And yeah. Bundle grenade gets another good shot, but the MG is preventing him from being taken out. Again, elephant opening fire along that fighting position. Jackson got pushed back. Again, not a lot of AT. A lot of infantry, but not a lot of bazookas. Like, again, bazooka force with uh, paratroopers, example, would be incredibly effective. So now, it with the we have a panzer strike force coming in to try to protect it. Elephant, unfortunately, needs to stop to, you know, pr protect itself. 
Shot, uh, oh, good shots there on the Jackson, pushing it back. If, if the, the elephant can get a shot on it, that would kill it. It does. He does kill it. Peter, oh my god, Satchel going off. Aw, oh, damn it. They realize him because they're near armor. They get a slight speed boost. We do have a Tiger. Tiger's advancing. Tiger's coming up. It's a nice shot on the Panzerful Slayers. P-47's inbound. Again, this thing is incredibly weak. But again, think about the limited amount of armor. Both armored forces, the KV-1 and the other one, got, defeated it. Plane's coming in for a strike on it. Elephant being, has to pull back before it's taken out. Penal's trying desperately to get that kill. Does he have PTS rifles being uh, equipped in? No, he doesn't. So I don't know why he's rushing up. Uh, but the Panzer headquarters just one-shots it, unfortunately. Uh, P-47's coming in. Gets the kill. Love how it's always 1945 for that damage XP. It just oh, puts, uh, again, a little smile. Anyway, grenade going off. A good artillery barrage hits it. Very nicely done. Very nicely done. Kills a lot of the infantry. Oh my god. That's just... Dimitri... Lo oh, all the Obel Sedan have been defeated. Oh, that... That's... That's, uh... That's gonna hurt. That's really gonna hurt. But, I mean, like, Joey lost a lot of his men, too. He lost, again, a penal troop. He lost... A wow, okay. These guys backing up, I don't know why. I, I really don't know why you're backing up there, Katushas, but okay. Um, but yeah, Joey lost his KV-1, he lost some infantry. Malam, I believe, lost at least one rifleman squad. He did lose his Jackson, but he got a new one, because again, he's he's being cautious. But now, think about the limited amount of AT that was used against that elephant. I mean, to be wrong, P-47s, but again, uh, Panzer Headquarters could have done AA mode to help shoot down the planes. Just for reference. Or the Axis could have focused on making sure there was AA on the field. Once you realize there's paratroopers, you know that their P-47 strike is an issue or could be called in. Having AA is something you really do need. Uh, for Cat and though, helping guard the Tiger. Again, very nicely done. The One thing I'll say is Dimitri is guarding his forces quite well. Uh, Panzer Grenadiers coming two different angles, pushing back the NG. Shock Troops rushing on in with four Mother Russia. Again, they like to eat, and with this ability, it definitely helps. Now, I believe that with the upgrade under fire, they don't move as quickly, but still, they're incredibly powerful to kind of move up on and do a lot of damage upon the enemy. A nice white phosphorus hit, uh, hurting the Panzer Slayers quite effectively. Also, artillery still coming in. Good grenade. Oh, so close. Actually gets the kill with the paratroopers long range. That's three of the four OP infantry, not, well, not OP, but incredibly powerful infantry Dimitri had just gone in the last, like, two minutes. That's going to cost him, and right now, he does have manpower to bring him back, but it's going to take a while to get the veterancy back. Nice rifle grenade, but unfortunately, paratroopers are in that cover holding the line. Second one, though, does a little more damage and kills a few more models. Though, additional American forces, all vet, by the way. Very good job, Milan, with your unit preservation. With your infantry. Pushing back against the Axis. Um, right now in the SU-85, not a bad idea. I uh, get that to help combat the, uh, the Tiger. Also, I, I find it weird that, um, we have not seen this AT gun or MG recruit. Uh, I, as I think they could be effective against this stuff, or you see artillery ability itself. Uh, artillery is like, nah, you're getting, that support gun's goner. Also hitting the Tiger a little bit, hitting the Engineers coming in. Again, that's the problem with healing on the front. He's so lucky this thing has not died. He's so lucky. Anyway. That's the problem with healing on the front line is artillery fire is in range and could do a lot of damage. So, yeah, be very careful on that. Panzer Grenadier is trying to advance, but again, there's NGs and such. So, you need a Tiger support to follow suit with it. Now, they're falling back, but the Tiger's engaging. You need a dual, you need to support each other because what this Tiger could have done, especially with the amount of munitions this guy has, is call in a barrage strike on uh, like a defensive position. Like, I, again, you're calling it on the howitzer, fine. I think the MG would have been a better hit than make sure the infantry could come up and support. But whatever, uh, you push back the howitzer and some infantry. Okay, Tiger's falling back once again. Again, Boink is pretty far away from any armor, but he is getting himself a Panzerwerfer. So I guess some artillery to help out. Unfortunately, what, uh, even though with the limited troops Joey does have, he is capturing territory away from the Axis, which is putting a strain on their fuel and resources, which is very good to see. Um, again, any little bit you can do to help uh, diminish the enemy's uh, resources does help in the long term. In any case, S-25 with shock troops on standby. The one thing I'll say, though, is, uh, Joey, you don't have a lot of uh, preservation with your forces. But Soviet troops do have a tendency to die a little more. So, I mean, I, I, I kind of see why. But, again, I, I think you could be a little better with the unit preservation. Dimitri 
uh, again, had good deal preservation, they all died from your Katushas, so you did very well with your artillery. And, uh, boink, a lot of very good, uh, upgraded men. Again, 26 kills, 33 kills, 7, and, uh, 27 respectively. Holy mackerel. I'm assuming that's a lot of infantry. Yeah, a lot, just based on uh, when you focus on infantry rather than... And then you got the Panzer Strike upgrade and then it's been a little bit lower. Panzer for coming in, pushing this stuff back. But he might have been anticipating that. Actually, it's a little farther back, but he kind of... Stopped, I think, or didn't do as much. I only saw a few rockets there. Katusha kind of hitting this whole general area, hitting the Pants Grenadiers and the Grenadiers, respectively. So, they may have to fall back, but at least they're trying to capture some territory. They are close enough to where if he continued, he could probably ambush the SU-85, but the SU-85 realizes that and is like, nope, I'm out. Peace. So, right now, we have an MG kind of going in the mid, but the Pants Full Series just come kind of field. They sit back, relax, and just be like, alright, we'll take him out. That's cool. Any case, they are going to put enough pressure against the MG and uh, probably kill it. Yep, it's... Oh, boy. Against the mortar carriage and the howitzer and the pathfinder, it did stand a chance. MG kind of coming in. I, I I will say this. Good flank. Using an MG to flank another MG. And it is MG42, so he somehow stole Boink's own MG and used it for himself. I mean, to be fair, I think it was over here next to the AT guns. So he's like, hey, if he's not using it, I'll use it. Um, and I will say this, Dimitri, you've been doing quite well with these, uh, Rakan Morphers, although I think a flank, uh, with the, t or, not flank, a push with the Tiger with the Rakan Morphers, with your infantry, spread out, so the Katushas can't annihilate them, or time it to where it's after a Katusha hit, could be very effective. Opal Zidane kind of up here by themselves, you need to watch them, because again, Shock Troops could throw a grenade, um, and kill them. We have grenade being thrown th on both sides. Wow, both sides barely alive from that, Shock Troops even more so. Holy mackerel, they have a sliver of health left. But, they almost down to walk into another uh, shock troop on the retreat path and expected to die. Oh, don't worry, it's still alive. It's standing there. <laughs> Tiger tank advancing once again. Putting a lot of pressure. Gets a great shot. Kills the MG immediately. Again, very good at killing infantry. Kills half the infantry squad right there. Additional infantry with paratroopers and riflemen. And, I'm sorry, riflemen and captain moving on in. Lots of tank destroyers though. AT. Jackson, SU-85, putting pressure over here. Pushing back the Tiger. AT trying to put pressure on the SU-85. Panzerful Slayer, uh, Panzerwerfer coming in. Getting a good shot right there. AT shot, managed to push back the SU-85. So good, he did recruit that. Army size, it is lower than the Allies by a by a decent margin. Re I mean, honestly, be people wise it is pretty close. We have artillery being called in, and we have actually KV-1 that he's gotten back. I'm assuming these units are going to die. I'm just going to make the assumption. And, uh, yep, fighting position still right there. It's like, you, you should expect that. Yeah, with the, oh my god, the artillery fire in mid is just annihilating. And they surrender. They still have actually a capable army. Boink and Dimitri really did. They had the tiger and everything, and I think a good strike could have really helped them out. Um, again, I kept waiting for, like, a decisive battle, because I know, uh, thank you, Malam, for submitting this replay, though, uh, Malam is an RNG supporter, Joey, as well, is a awesome a Patreon supporter, so thank you, Joey and Malam, for supporting my channel, and thank you, Malam, for submitting this replay. In any case, I do want to highlight a few key notes of this. Uh, Dimitri had a really good infantry set, he was very good with the Kenworthers, very good with the infantry and very good with the i mean eventually when he got the tiger though i think his manpower losses of his infantry cost it of getting it sooner i think a combined effort like a really synchronized infantry and for camera for saying the flank while the tiger pushes forward would have been very good and probably helped win the battle uh again good call joey on the katushas they did do a number on the allied uh, sorry the access line so very good job there the infantry did fine i think it was funny because you actually a lot of unfortunately dimitri's shortcomings were, was pushing on right and then he would be killed on the retreat path. So always take that um, into effect when you attack the enemy. That retreat path of heading back to your lines. Boink. Uh, man. Um, okay. So first, don't advance an elephant by itself without support. So that would help you out. Uh, secondly, um, you got to really give it infantry. I do like your grand ears and some good preservation there. Though, I, I like I said, I think the Axis armor was not as good as their infantry. Uh, but that doesn't say, I think the armor just didn't have a chance. The half shark is put in a position where it's literally fighting long range uh, against AT. It's, it's going to die instantly. Um, 
the Pentagradiers did do a lot against, like, the armor, but then you had a Panzer IV rush at KV-1, then straight on with the Jackson still present. With Panzergradiers there, or maybe some infantry, you could have held that back. For Cadmorphers, held that back so the Panzer IV could kill and escape, but by itself, with the Jackson behind, that's a bad, bad mix. Especially the KV-1 can still penetrate a Panzer IV, but the Panzer IV has trouble penetrating a KV-1. Um, Malami did really good with your infantry. Jackson, unfortunately, I think maybe a little more AT would have definitely put an end to the Axis armor. Um, but again, your P-47, I, 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 like I said, I'm, I'm surprised the Axis didn't, like, think that planes would be in effect. Like, again, they should have had an Oswind or something, a half-track. Maybe kept that half-track back so that when the planes come in, you instantly shot them down. Or at least... You know, that's that's what I would have done. Because, again, it's like, you know the enemy's going to have planes, so make sure you get AA. That's Anytime I play as the Soviets, I'm always like, don't worry, guys, I got your AA coverage. Because I know, versus the Germans, there could be smoke, there could be recon, there could be just be a super close air support. There could be something coming in that I want to make sure it's not a factor for my other allied players. So that's why I always make sure that someone calls out AA. And I think that would have been helpful for these guys, since they had... A lot, like, they knew that these guys were doing this. Also, Joey having shock, a KV-1 and shock troops is like, okay, most likely he's go he has B-4. He never used to B-4, but also remember, as much as I like counterattacks, the B-4 is not the only thing. You have the KV-1, you have shock troops, you have recon, which could have been shot out. And again, the recon was what was used for the Katushas to get great strikes. And as well, you have uh, four Mother Russia active. So again, something to take note of. Uh, but otherwise, that's going to be game again. Uh, let's double check overall damage. Excuse me. Um, Milan got more damage and kills. Uh, Joey, a close second, though, took some more losses, though. So he is. That makes sense, honestly. Uh, best player on the Axis side was Boink. Got a little more damage and a little more kills. Uh, Dimitri actually took a little more damage. And honestly, I, I, I can absolutely see why. Because if we go to Boink, um, Grenadiers did very well for themselves. Panzer Grenadiers as well. But if we look at, like, kills for these guys, who I think survived the entire game... 38, 29, that's a lot of kills for just two units to do. So they they were definitely pulling uh, weight. Malam as well, again, with his, his infantry, did very well. I love Rash Lance, of course. Uh, that, that's the thing we want to highlight. Uh, Jackson did pretty well. But, um, yeah, for example, the Rifleman, 16 kills, 29 kills, uh, 12 kills, uh, 7, 5. Okay, 21 kills with the mortar carriage. So he was more spread out, but still a ton of uh, kills on it with his troops. Um, so good job there. And again, Joey as well. If we go to him, I'm assuming his shock troops did a lot. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Well, I know actually we take a look at his penal's got 34 kills. That's not a whole lot. I'd probably say all, maybe a lot of his kills came from the Katushas. Yeah, that's 40 kills right there. So combine that with maybe some of the shock troop kills he got earlier. That's why he was able to increase maybe also with the KV-1. Um, but yeah, I don't, Dimitri, do we cover you? Uh, yeah, Pensful Sleers. Pensful Sleers did very well. That's why you were able to get up there. But Opal Sedan did extremely well, too. And for Ken Werfers, help you get that damage uh, increase that much. Though I, I think if I had to assume what the damage on there is, again, his Panzer Grandiers combined with his Grandiers just killing a lot of infantry. And the Panzer Grandiers putting a lot of pressure on the armor. And again, don't forget that he still had that AT gun. I love it. He still had this Soviet AT. But that's going to be it, guys. Again, thank you for watching. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this round. If you did, make sure you hit the like, subscribe button. It does help out the channel. If you want to go one step further, there's some links down below you can check out. But anyway, it's been Grayshaw17. I'll see you all next time. Hello, everyone. And before you go, I want to thank the October patrons, which include GTA, Jacob Oswey, Spartacus, Ace, Aldo Lopez, Chris Bailey, Folkford, Junior Chicklist, Ollie, Pyroshark, Rifle, Streaking Wookie, Joey G, 240, Josh, Malam, and Moustache. Thank you all so very much for your amazing support. This has been Grayshot17 and his amazing patrons, and we'll see you next time.